This clever little device is found in everything from washing machines to power tools. In fact, if your tool is quiet enough, you can hear the characteristic clicking sound that it makes. Listen to my drill press, for example. And the air compressor with the belt removed. It's called a centrifugal switch. And I recently began having problems with this guy, which is something I've never experienced before. So today I wanna to show you how I repaired the problem. It was a very easy fix actually. And I'll show you how it works because this dude is pretty amazing. Let's take a look. So why do you need something like this to begin with? Well, the motor most commonly found in washers, dryers, and many power tools in fact, requires a little kickstart in order to get going. In order to get the motor spinning, engineers will often use capacitors to give it that little kickstart but you only want this thing connected to the motor for maybe a second or so, otherwise it will quite literally explode. Therefore, we need to connect the capacitor to the motor when it's not spinning, and as soon as it gets up to speed, we need to disconnect the motor, introducing the centrifugal switch. This amazing little device is so simple, it's just two springs and a weight, but as the motor spins up, these weights fling out and they open a circuit. So here we have the beginnings of our start winding. This switch right here is connected when you push it down. And as you can see, this red LED is blinking when I close the switch. Now I've only got three volts DC connected here, so there's no risk of being electrocuted or anything like that. So during normal operation, this would go in here. And as you can see, the circuit is now closed. Once you turn on the power to the motor, this start winding plus the main winding will both be connected to power. But remember, we only want this to be connected for maybe a half a second or so, really once the motor gets up to about 80, 90% of its rated speed. So what happens is as this gas starts to spin, these weights tend to want to fling out like this. This tendency of the weights to want to swing out is something you've experienced before. If you've ever ridden a roller coaster, in fact, if you've made a hard turn in a car and felt all of your body weight shift to one side of the car, that same force is what causes these weights to want to swing out away from the center. Now here's what makes this device so clever. You want it to open at about 85, 90% of its rated speed because you want to make sure you've given it just enough kick without overheating the motor. But you also want it to snap closed very quickly, otherwise you'll be rubbing this for a long time and wearing out the starter winding. So these weights are carefully calibrated to open up at exactly the right speed make them just a little bit heavier and they open up at lower speeds, make them a little bit lighter, they open up at higher speeds. Calibrate the spring to just the right amount so you get a nice crisp, quick snap back into place and you've got a clever little device that will open and close your motor and last for many years. Now that you've seen this, let me show it to you fully assembled inside the motor. You know, I have to say, beyond its simplicity, there's one more thing that's really impressive about this device to me, and that's how old it is. This simple mechanism is over 100 years old and we still use it. We have not found a comparable replacement. Now don't get me wrong, there are lots of electrical alternatives to this. We've come up with all kinds of ways to start motors. But what I'm saying is we still use this. This is still the most cost-effective way to start motors and thus why we still find them in induction motors today. I have searched and searched and I cannot find out who invented this, but let me tell you, that was one clever dude or gal. I guess it could be a woman. Maybe one of you guys will help me find out. Now let's talk about how to fix it when it goes wrong. So here's a logical flow for investigating whether you're having a problem with your centrifugal switch. First, your symptoms are going to be the motor is either very slow to start or won't start at all. If your motor won't start at all, the problem is very likely your capacitor or capacitors and you should go ahead and replace them. I wouldn't even bother opening the motor up. You can look at the label and see what kind of capacitor you need in order to replace it. Generally, you want to get one that's very similar 
in capacitance and voltage rating. You can go up, but not down. So you can get one that's got more capacitance and a higher voltage rating, but you can't go the other way or you're probably just gonna damage the capacitor. Now, if the motor is very slow to start, and especially if it's slow to start and you have two capacitors, it's more likely the problem is your centrifugal switch and not the capacitors. And in this case, you're gonna to need to open up the back of the motor and investigate. And I'll show you how I did that with my dust collector. In order to test your motor, you are gonna need a multimeter like this, and you're just gonna set it to measure continuity. Every multimeter is a little different, but you can find this setting in your manual usually. Well, here's how it should work. So in this state, these two wires should be connected, but they're not. When wires are connected, the meter will beep on the continuity setting. So I should be getting a beep right now. Now I know the tab is working because I can touch that and I have continuity, but not across here. While I'm thinking about it, don't forget to unplug your machine while you're working on it. Looking at it from up here, I can see that that tab is really dirty. So let's disassemble it and have a look at it. Loose. That. What a fascinating mechanism. Okay, that tab definitely looks burnt. Let's do this. Here you can get a much better look. And there's sort of a black crust as well as some white frosting. That's how I would describe it. Around that tab and pretty much covering the whole tab, which I think is what's keeping this from making continuity. And that side is a little bit worn, but it doesn't look as bad as the other side. So I'm just gonna take a piece of sandpaper and scrub that surface a little bit as well as this one and then reassemble it. Okay, that actually looks a lot better already. Well, let's see if it makes a difference. Wow, what a difference that makes. So simple. Nothing. Contact. Nothing. Huh. Much better. Let's fire it up. Now that's the kind of starter torque we should have. I gotta say, I've opened up a whole bunch of motors in the last several years, making tutorials about how they work and how to fix them. And every time I marvel at this little device, it's just amazing to me how it can be so simple and yet so clever. Anyway, thanks for watching.